Hi and welcome. I am sharing a spread in my watercolor journal today using Distress Inks and also Distress Oxides together with that stencil smooshing technique. I really love this technique and I shared already some spreads um, with this style on my channel. I will link them up in the end cards or maybe also in the video description. I'm starting out with the picked raspberry in distress ink and I'm searching for my my paper towels but I couldn't find them so I'm just using this one. Um, I really like the pattern I got here with the with these mini ink dots and I am always using the second print of the stencil on the left side. That gives me a cohesive look for the page. Um, I always have the feeling with this technique in the beginning, it's always hard to see um, that the page will turn out pretty. It's kind of that what I had in my last video with that ugly stage where you maybe think it does not turn out nice, um, but just you have just to work through this stage. I decided to make more of these pink um, dots and I tried to line it up with the previous um, imprint but I think I used not enough water on the stencils so um, I have that nice pattern but I, I usually wanted to have more color. Um, in the end I don't mind, I will just add more stencil pattern and more ink until I'm happy with the background. It's always a bit difficult with uh, layering up a watercolor medium because it's usually transparent and everything will shine through. So the more you add, the more muddy it can, can become and also the more overworked it maybe will look. So um, I try to be a little bit careful I'm using a brush here and I'm just blending in the color a little bit. For my next pattern I'm using that Leaves number no. 2 stencil and I know it does not have many areas where I will get a transfer of the ink but it will give me some line work on the background and I think that leafy pattern matches my autumnal page quite well. I picked out only autumn colors um, for this spread, uh, warm tones and oranges and browns in addition to that pink and green. For my next layer I'm using that Mark's number one stencil. It will give me a nice pattern. And by the way, I cleaned, and uh, not I cleaned, I dried the page in between with my heat tool um, a little bit, not a hundred percent, but I don't want to blend everything together. I want to layer it up. The green I'm using here is the moss green, and I believe it was the Distress Oxide ink pad. Again I'm coming in with my brush here and I'm picking up the ink from that stencil and move it around my page. I take care that I don't cover everything. I want to leave some white space to get a white tonal range in the end. For my next layer, I pick the small ink dots stencil together with the Spiced Marmalade Distress Ink. Um, I really love that pattern. It's uh, very neutral and almost perfect for any background. You will find photos of the finished project over on my blog. I will give you the link in the video description. 
and you will find all the stamps and stencils I'm using over in our shop. They are all linked also in the video description. I'm also using a brush here to move around a bit more of that ink in areas where I feel I need it. And what I also feel is that the page looks quite flat, except from the white space. And I needed something darker to bring in more contrast. And in my next step, I'm going to use the Espresso Ground Distress Ink um, together with a stencil to create the pattern. That's our crisscross stencil, also one I really like because it has a lot of um, um, surface, I would say. It gives me a great um, pattern on the, on the page and I really like the contrast I got here with the um, ground espresso. I decided to um, ink up that stencil again for the left side of the page because I felt there is not enough ink on the stencil and I'm also moving around the ink a bit with my brush. It was not quite much ink that I got transferred to the left side. It's always a bit harder to um, to get the ink down because the book is quite bulky and that's a bit difficult, but I'm just using my brush again and I try to not paint into the crosses from the pattern. I just try to paint around and just fill out that left upper edge of my spread. For my main image, I wanted to use one of these leaves. I made them with our sketchy leaf stencils and with some jelly printing. I already have recorded a reel for my Instagram page and I will definitely post it there uh, probably today or maybe I already have. Uh, but if you're interested, just leave me a comment and I can make a full video tutorial on how I made these. Um, collage for the elements and I think about using that pink on the page I'm just going through the colors I have I think that lighter pink is better because it brings in more contrast and as this has a black outline the leaf I wanted to have something black on my page to make everything look cohesive so I'm using that spiral stamp from our Mix It Up number four. And I would just stamp it to the area where I wanted to adhere that leaf later. I also plan to add some collage papers where I can put the leaf on so it does not uh, fly on my page. And to make it even more cohesive, I decided to stamp half of that spiral to the left side I'm using a piece of foam to lay it under my pages to make sure I get a good stamp impression, especially on the left side. It's a bit hard because the book is so bulky, as I already told you. I'm now going through my paper scraps and I will search for some papers that I like um, combined with my leaf. Uh, it took me a while to figure out which papers I want to use and that's the reason why I speed up that part a little bit.
I finally figured out which papers I wanted to use and I'm gluing them all together um, aside my page because I plan to add a stitching stamp on top of this collage element to make it look as if it was stitched together. Of course, you can use a sewing machine and just sew over your paper. Um, I'm always a bit too lazy to pull out my sewing machine and I don't have it sitting on my desk because I think it's not a very beautiful view to have it on my desk. And I also don't want to get a lot of dusk on it. I'm using a stamp from our Mixed Media Borders and here I'm searching for that Stay Zone stamp pad. As it's an acrylic surface, I would use Stay Zone to stamp because it dries quite quickly. By the way, I use the Versafine Clear in black to stamp the spiral. As this is just watercolor paper and ink. Um, it will dry without any issues and Versafine Clear ink gives you um, a better result regarding a good stamp image. Especially with clear stamps because they are quite sticky and stays on is also quite sticky and that's sometimes a bit difficult um, if you don't have enough ink in the ink pad or if your surface is not perfect. And that's the reason why I always use the Versafine Clear if it's possible and only the stay zone when I have a non-porous surface. I really like the look of it and I plan to adhere it underneath my leaf. But before I adhere everything, I wanted to add some um, color splatters in neon pink. Because there is quite a lot of neon on the right side, but none on the left. So I think I needed some splatters also on the left side. And I'm also going to make some black splatters to the page because that goes with the black spiral and the black outline of my focal image. After my splatters were dry, I decided I want to have a bit more of a dimensional look for the focal image and I decided to pick that smaller leaf as well but I think it's a bit boring as it is and I want to do some stamping like here on top of that leaf. I think that gives me more interest. I'm going to zoom you in and then we will do the stamping. I wanted to have a text on the leaf but I want some text that is not too big and I picked the art defined stamp uh, it's quite a nice stamp for background texture and it fits that leaf quite well, I feel. It's not too much, but it's visible. Yes, and that is all I'm doing. I will now adhere the leaves to my page and I will add a sentiment to it and you will see the finished spread here in the photos. I hope you enjoyed that video and I wish you a wonderful weekend and I hope we will see us next time. Bye!